Hey, what's up? Alex here. TV backlight has become one of my must-have smart home products in the house. I have it installed in both of my 65-inch TV and I also shared it in one of my renovation tips video. Some of you might think that uh, these RGB lights are so lame. But I can tell you, once you see it in person, experience one, then you might not think the same way anymore. If I'm only allowed to have just one RGB lights in the house, then 100% no doubt it will be the TV backlight. Unless you're going with those wall-mounted TV that flush nicely with the wall, such as the Samsung Frame TV. For the rest, especially if your TV is sitting on a stand, then you should definitely consider installing a TV backlight. In this video, I'm going to check out and showcase 4 different products from 4 different companies. First is something new and very different from Philips Hue this year. This is a very interesting solution because the sync is actually managed by a TV app. Right now, it only works on Samsung TV that is released in 2023. You will need to pay for a one-time fee to use the Philips Hue TV app, as well as buying the light strip itself. Philips Hue products are mainly based on Zigbee, so if this is your first Philips Hue product, then you will need to get their bridge. Unboxing the light strip, you'll be able to find the light strip itself. I really like that their light strip comes with a diffuser. You have some brackets to hold the light strip in place, a control box, and of course, a power adapter. The installation is very straightforward. First, take the brackets, two at the top corners, one at the top middle, and one at each side. After that, just simply fit the light strip into the brackets. There's no need to stick the strip which makes the installation very easy. Lastly, just connect the end to the control box followed by the power adapter and you are done with the installation. You can see that the light strip didn't cover the entire TV and that's because this is a 65 inch TV and at the time of shooting this video, we only have the 55 inch light strip in Singapore. I'm told that the 65 inch light strip will be coming in Q3 next year. An alternative workaround now is you can install their Hue Play Bus at the two bottom corners, but even with the 65 inch light strip, it will not cover the bottom at all. And the reason is they find that having the bottom lights does not really matter and affect the whole experience, especially if the TV is sitting on a stand or if you have a soundbar placed right below. You can only start to play around with the TV app settings once you have paid for the app. One of the downsides is how Philips Hue license the app usage. The app is bind to this specific TV, one app, one TV. So basically, you can't shift the entire setup to another TV. Inside the app, you have two modes that you can set, video mode and game mode. Within each mode, you are able to set its own brightness and intensity level. They have a very interesting setting here that I don't commonly see. Background lighting that allows you to set whether you want a background light even when the screen is black. If you have other Philips Hue products that you like to sync them together, you can do so easily within the mobile app to set the placement. For smart home integrations, Philips Hue can work very well with all the major platforms, no issue. Overall, I really like this solution because it has the cleanest setup, no camera, no sync box, and it is able to work with all your native TV apps. The lights, the color gradient is something that I feel that Philips Hue stands out from the rest. Some of you might be wondering, so how about Philips Hue HDMI sync box? One simple reason why I'm not covering it is because it does not support HDMI 2.1. To me, that's super important. And that brings me to the next product, which is a HDMI sync box solution from Lightme. This is for 65 inch TV. They have many options for different TV sizes from 27 inch all the way to 120 inch. Inside the box, you have a nice user manual, power adapter, then you have the HDMI sync box. There are two button controls, five HDMI ports, one for your TV and the rest for all your HDMI devices. They provide a HDMI AK cable to connect to your TV some clips to secure the strip, and lastly, the light strip itself. Here is a close-up look at the LED lights, and that's everything you will find. You will need separate HDMI cables for your input devices. Okay, so input devices can be your TV setup box, laptop, PC, or gaming consoles like PlayStation, Xbox, or a Nintendo Switch. Follow the user manual to install the light strip in the correct orientation. After that, just connect everything to the HDMI sync box, and that's all. If you don't know about this, Lightme is a Tuya device, which means you can use the Smart Life app and add the device in. Smart Life has official integration to Google Home, Alexa, and SmartThings. If you are using Home Assistant, once you did the Tuya integration, you are able to see the entity as well. 
Inside the Smart Life app, there's no configuration required. It's like plug and play. The only settings you can change is the brightness and degree of diffusion, which is like the intensity level. There is also no way to synchronize it with other lights in a setup, purely standalone. Actually, I've been using the previous model that only support HDMI 2.0 to my PlayStation 5. But I run into lots of issues when I'm trying to play the latest high graphical games, especially with things like VRR and ALLM. Like me have a pro version, but clearly states here that it will not work for LG TV. So that's one of the major concerns with using a HDMI sync box solution. You will also be limited by the supported resolution and refresh rate. For this, it supports 4K 120Hz or 8K 60Hz. This is of course good enough for now, but after a few years time might not be. So there is no kind of future proof. But having said that, I'll still be using it for my PS5 setup. I like that the colors you see are not very colorful, so it's not very distracting. I don't have other lights I like to sync with in this room, so that's also fine. Next product is something that has gotten very popular in the recent years. A camera-based TV sync solution and Govi is probably the OG for this. Unlike the previous two solutions that have some big restrictions or limitations, this kind of TV backlight uses a camera to pick up the reflections, read the colors and have the light strip to adjust accordingly. As such, there are literally no restrictions. You can use it on any TV brands, whether or not you have a HDMI input device, or if you're just watching directly from the TV native apps, anything goes. What I have here is the Govi TV Backlight T2, which is like their second gen. This is the smaller size for 55 to 65 inch TV. They have another two more sizes all the way up to 100 inch TV. Opening up the box, you will first see the camera. I realize this is much bigger compared to the T1. Next is the control box, which looks very similar to the T1. A bunch of clips to secure the strip, USB-C cable for the camera, power adapter, alcohol pads, and lastly the light strip itself. Again, give you a close-up look at the LEDs, and now time for installation. For Govi, the light strip has been trimmed for the four sides. In a way, you don't need to twist the light strip at the corners. This way, it's much easier to stick the light strip. But this also means that the four corners will be slightly darker since there are no LEDs there. Then, place the camera at the top aligned to the center. This camera has like two lens pointing at two different sides of the TV. Comparing this to the T1, you can see the big difference here. Stick the control box to the back of the TV and plug in the light strip, camera, and power adapter all to the control box and you are done with the installation. The most important step for such camera-based solution is the calibration. You need to do this step properly, plotting the exact corners of the TV based on the camera view if not, the color accuracy you see later will be very off. Inside the app, you have the option to select all and the strip will be set with a single color if that's what you prefer. It is also able to do a sync with some of the other Govi lights in their product line, such as their standing lamp I have here. One small little complaint I have for Govi products is their smart home integration. Google and Amazon Alexa works fine, but for the rest, it's not officially supported. Even the integration with Home Assistant, it didn't work quite well and lots of intermittent issues. In terms of color accuracy, camera base will not be as accurate compared to the previous two solutions just now, but the good thing is they come at a cheaper price. You also need to be okay having a camera on top, which I know is a deal breaker for some. Last product is from a new player in the TV backlight space, but they are no stranger to the smart home world one of the best RGB smart lighting companies that produce very high quality products, and that's NanoLeaf. Their solution is also based on a camera screen mirroring type of concept, so straight off you know that this will work as long as there is a display on the screen. What I have here is the kit for TVs and monitors up to 65 inch, which means you can totally use this for 55 inch or smaller TV. They also have another longer kit for up to 85 inch TV. Official integration for all the major smart home platforms here and including Home Assistant. Unboxing this, you can find some NanoLeaf sticky pads, the light strip itself, give you a closer look at the strip and the LED lights. Then you have the power adapter, the camera holder, and separately the camera that has a privacy cover which is magnetic, very nice. The control box here that has an on and off button. Lastly, four corner brackets, optional whether you want to use them. And here is everything in one glance, everything you need for the setup. 
For the camera placement, you can either have it placed on top of the TV or another way if you have a TV console below is to not use the camera holder at all and just have the camera placed on the console. You are able to tilt the camera at an angle facing the screen. For the control box, you can either stick it behind the TV, hide it somewhere or just place somewhere if you are going to use the button controls. So basically, the camera, the light strip and the power adapter will all connect to this control box and that's all for the installation. Again, for all camera basing, you will need to calibrate the camera and if you have other Nano Leaf products that you like to sync together as well, you can easily add the placement inside the app. For Nano Leaf, you can set the mirror modes 1D, 2D, 3D or 4D. 1D gives you a simple white ambient lighting. 2D will give a single color to the strip based on the screen display. 3D will give multi colors. And for 4D, you will see lesser colors, but it includes some lighting effects and varying brightness, which becomes a little too much for me at times. There are also a vibrancy setting, cinematic, vivid or custom. Their differences are quite obvious. Cinematic tones down the RGB by a lot, while Vivid showcased Nano Leaf's RGB to its full potential. If you have other Nano Leaf products in the setup, it syncs very nicely with them. You can see that I have the Nano Leaf lines at my front door area. Okay, to summarize some key points. The Philips Hue TV app is only available for Samsung TV models from this year. Very clean setup, work with native TV apps, but upfront cost is quite high. For Like Me HDMI sync box, works only with a HDMI input device but very limited by the specs like HDMI 2.1, 4K 120Hz or 8K 60Hz and doesn't have other lights to sync with. Then for camera based solution like the Govi T2 and Nano Leaf 4D, you need to be okay with the camera sticking on top. For Nano Leaf, you can have it sit on top of a console instead. Colors are not as accurate and they tend to be more on the colorful side able to work with any TV content and is generally cheaper. Hope this video is useful in helping you to pick the TV backlight product that is suitable for your requirements. If you are still hesitant in trying out a TV backlight, I would really suggest you to give it a try. I'm one that is also skeptical at first, but I will say I really love having one now and that's also why I want to do this video and share this with everyone. That's all from me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.